Hey now, family, it is Jaquie Rogers along with my mother, <laughs> Cyrilla Shaw, and we are with Blessed Are the Bereaved. And today we are checking in. It's been a while. Um, and since the last time we we made a video, we've had our first Companioning the Bereaved volunteer workshop. Yes, we have. Yes. And so <laughs> today's episode is all about reflecting on that experience as well as letting you all know uh, when our next experience, when our next workshop will be taking place. And then we'll also invite a mama to the couch today, a special guest who we've known for years mm -hmm. and years. You probably longer. Well, you definitely longer than me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we kind of grew up together. <laughs> yeah, and we'll be inviting her to the couch to share her own experiences with, with grief and her bereavement journey um, and the loss of her child. So yes. with that being said, let's get started. So entering into our first workshop, um, we had three specific goals that we expressed with the volunteers who'd be joining us. And that was that through this workshop, we'd explore the five dimensions of grief. Um, we'd explore the differences between companioning, which is what we do, and treatment, which is what someone might seek out if they need more professional support um, in their bereavement journey, as well as different tools and activities that we'll be using through um, our Blessed Are the Bereaved support groups. Yes, so. yes it was so exciting to quee. And our goal uh, was to help the volunteers in the workshop not only learn uh, about facilitation and companioning, but to also practice and experience some of the activities that we'd be doing with the parents. For instance, Jenga, mm -hmm. and you can set up a set and put uh, the, the, name, the words on the different pieces that people would be pulling out or just have them open in your hand and let people pull one, but they're completing a statement when they pull this out. Now, when we did the Jenga in our volunteer workshop, mm -hmm. it took us to a place I wasn't expecting. Mm -hmm. Some of the volunteers, as they were reading their Jenga statement and they were finishing it, actually reflected on some of their own deeply embedded experiences. Yeah. As they did that, we were able to support each other in that. And I'm so glad that happened because a comfort level developed in us knowing it's okay to express yourself. Yeah. And I helped them to know too, we told them that in your group, uh, you are gonna be sharing mm -hmm. as well. Uh, at times, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. And we got a good laugh when I talked about the fact that as you're sharing now, we don't want you to just get so inundated, inundated I'm sorry, that you're just falling over know, blubbering, no. and the rest of your group is sitting there wondering where you went. Like you, you know, get so... <laughs> Yeah, so it was wonderful. And then with the five dimensions, uh -huh. we know that every human is physical, we're social, we're mental. We've got all of these spiritual, all of these different parts to us. And so they were given a circle mm -hmm. called the five dimensions of grief. And each one, they were given the color markers and so forth and asked to illustrate for us what it is that they experience in, when they're grieved. And so we told them that to think of it as a pie. Mm -hmm. And I think a few of them did. Yeah. But some of them, we saw stripes and balloons and clouds and some all kinds of other. people just used it as a canvas for a picture to <laughs> right. just demonstrate to just what it looks like for them. For them. Right. Okay. And so, and we wanted them to, we, to share that and to know that as they are facilitating that these are the things that they that they can expect. Even talked about when it comes to, we've got tissue here on the table now, that we want to always have tissue available, but if someone starts to cry, 
the tissue is there and they will grab it mm -hmm. if they want. We don't want to send the message to them of here, wipe your face, stop crying. Mm -hmm. And so we want to just have that there so that they know that if they want to wipe their face, they can. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so uh, we'll also be releasing a tool. It'll be included in the comment section. Uh, mourner's code. The mourner's code. code. Yeah. Yes. So we'll, at the end of this video, we'll be sharing the mourner's code with you yes. all. And I think that that brought a lot of aha moments out of our volunteers about the rights that yes, you have a lot of aha as someone who yes. is who is processing and grieving and 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 finding your way after the loss of someone significant in your life and yes, so yes. we'll be sharing that tool uh as a, as a quick little giveaway at the end of this video <laughs> on today as well yes um one of the lasting impressions i had following this workshop had a lot to do with the identities of the people who showed up for the workshop actually because okay. everyone there identified as a black woman and so I think that there is a layer um, or, or more that exists for us when it comes to what it means to actually take time out to process how we're feeling and process mm -hmm. emotions and process something as deep as grief especially when you know it's been impressed upon us and the world that we're supposed to be the strong ones mm -hmm. and that we're supposed to be able to push through and get over it mm -hmm. so that we can be there for our families and our communities, you know, so without so taking true. the time to actually yes. not be okay. Yes. Yeah. And yes. so, um, you know, that was a conversation that was, that was brought up by somebody who's experienced, who was in the group who experienced a lot of loss and a lot of pain and still through all of that felt she always had to show up and be there for everybody else for and everyone so else. Yes. it was really important to stress in this group that this is that space for you all to take care of yourselves and our community members who may not otherwise have it so yes 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 yeah yes yes <laughs> and so we're really excited that several of you have reached out and asked us about when our next companioning the bereaved workshop will be taking place and so at the end of this video we'll also include the companioning the bereaved volunteer workshop application as well as an application uh, for parents who are interested in participating in our blessed are the bereaved workshops and once so we start those and so please share those make people aware that this resource is going to be here. Yeah. And we want those applications to come in because the more applications we get, the more groups we can hold. Indeed. And we're training our wonderful volunteers and that group ended very excited yes. about getting to work. Yes. And so please help us gather applications again from parents who have lost a child through death. It can be father, mother, we want them, the guardian, whoever raised or spent a significant amount of time with that child yeah. and they died. All right now family, we are back and as you can tell, the spot between us is empty. Yes. Um, while shooting the last segment of our video, we received a phone call uh, from our mama friend, mm -hmm. uh, letting her letting us know that you know it just it wasn't this she, this wasn't the the setting the setting or the place to tell her story. Yeah. Um, and we absolutely honor and respect that. And we also grappled with whether or not to even release this portion of the video um, yes. and whether, whether or not to cut out <laughs> the pieces where we alluded to the fact that she would be here, whether or not to come back uh, yeah. after talking about our Companioning the Bereave Workshop series. But we thought it was really important to document this part of our journey as well because yes. we're, this is new and we're, we're learning the best way to support our community and mm -hmm. a part of us thought that maybe having a parent from the community who was going through um, the very thing we're trying to build support around mm -hmm. uh, would somehow add to yeah. to the goal, but right. And and Jaque, when we do get a chance to start the groups, there will be an exercise uh, called the mask, mm -hmm. and they will have either cardboard or paper masks, of course, with a outside and an inside, and on both occasions with the 
mothers whose children have died that efforts were made to get them to the couch for an interview, mm -hmm. I got the impression mm -hmm. that they have adjusted to life so well that they are now in a position to come here and just really talk about it all. Everything from the story to what did and didn't help. Mm -hmm. And this shows us that what I saw in them on the outside is not even a hint of what's going on inside of them. Yeah. And our last individual, I am so proud of her. And if you're listening, I want you to know that. She stated to us, I can't come and I don't even know why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she said the idea of a camera being on me and me telling my story. She says, I just can't get myself to feel right yeah. doing that. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. really resonated with me, especially um, as a black mother who's watched the news and seen tons of cameras shoved into the faces Yes. of families and members in our community who are experiencing grief and who are forced to experience those things publicly. Um, and, and, you know, this is an opportunity to step back and think about true ways mm -hmm. and sustainable ways to make a difference and, and help uh, these families. And, you yes. know, yes. A camera and broadcasting their stories to the world as opposed to the approach, the dominant approach we're taking and creating safe spaces mm -hmm. for them to process. Um, you know, yeah. the approach of broadcasting their grief to the world is not no the healthiest way to yes to help them so and they helped us grow by yeah. showing us that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that is a lesson learned and we thought that it was especially since we we advertised that we would invite a mama to the couch. So we want to be transparent um, when we're not able to follow through on the things that we say. But also, um, hopefully, this will be a learning experience um, when it comes to being effective companions yes. uh, to our loved ones who are who are navigating the bereavement process. So yes, yeah, and even among our volunteers. One was very strong in sharing that the pain of the experience never goes away. Yeah. She herself lost a child, I believe, over a decade ago. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to us saying that there's no end date, there's no yeah. expiration date. And so I believe, Jaquie, that we've embarked upon something that's going to prove very valuable. Yeah. Uh, we need each other yeah. with these journeys and we have to let our participants shape the journey and not believe that we can put structure around it and dictate it. It's going to morph into what it is for them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So that being said, <laughs> Like we promised at the end of this video, there will be an application for those who are interested in participating in our upcoming Companioning the Bereaved Volunteer Workshop. We also have an application for those parents who'd be interested in participating in a Blessed Are the Bereaved eight week long support group. And finally, we'll include the Mourner's Code, uh, which helps you identify and better understand the rights you have as an individual who's navigating your own bereavement process. So All thank right. you again. Thank you. All right.